We're going to develop this other form alongside general form and gradient intercept form. We're going to develop together point gradient form. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to notice, right, the gradient's important to this, right? Gradient, by definition, is this fraction of rise over run. We know this. Okay. Now, when you have a look at the question, you've got all of these pieces that go into this equation. Think about it. Um, you've got a gradient. I can just put that in, right? I can just put the number in. If I want to work out, uh, sorry, rise over run, what's the actual x and y stuff that belongs here? What do I have to write? Y2 minus y1. Y2 minus y1. Very good. That's like how high you were, how high you come from, over. It's the same quantity, but you're looking horizontally rather than vertically. Okay? So in other words, I need two points, don't I? x1, y1 x2, y2. Now look, I have one of the points right here. Okay? So I'm going to write down over here. Let's call the first point uh, x1, y1. Let's call it this point. It's one of the points on my line. Negative 3, comma, 1. Okay. Now I need another point. This is the tricky bit. I don't know what this other point can be. In fact, it can be a whole bunch of different things. So therefore, I'm going to give it a label that says, all right, I'm not sure what it is. I use pronumerals whenever I'm not sure what a number is. I'm just changing it slightly because I don't need to have these twos anymore, as you'll see in a second. So here's the idea. I know this point, so I just supply the numbers, whatever's given. I don't know this point, so I supply pronumerals because that's what I use pronumerals for when I don't know the value. Now I'm ready. Watch what happens. Uh, what do I have over here on the left hand side? This is M. Okay. So I'm going to substitute all this stuff that I know into here and see what comes out. Okay. Left hand side. That's just 2, isn't it? Right hand side. What am I going to write on the numerator instead of y2 minus y1? Have a look at my values over here. I think I'm going to write y minus. There's y1 there, isn't it? That's y1? 1. Do you agree with that? Do you see how I've used these pieces here to substitute? I can do the same thing for the denominator. I'm going to get x take away uh, negative 3. Right? There's a double negative, so I want to watch out for that. Okay? Now, this is really good because this is a whole lot more simpler, even though I had to think about it a second because of this. This is a whole lot more simpler than all of this. This is like, oh, you've got some value, you've got to go round and round, find a value, put it back in. If you have a look at this, as I rub this out, what would you do to simplify this line down here? What would be the next thing? You have a look, pick up your pen and have a go. I'm trying to get to something nice and simple down the end. What would you do to that equation, to both sides, to start to make it a bit neater. Write something down while I make my... Now there's lots of things you can do and there's lots of valid things you can do in different orders. For me, the first thing that makes me feel a bit uncomfortable is this double negative down here. How do I fix that? It's gonna become x plus three, right? That's good. Now I heard it a few times being sort of whispered around. What will I do from here to both sides? Yeah, I wanna multiply through, right? So I'm gonna multiply both sides by x plus 3, like so. Uh, sorry, that's a minus. That was just miswritten. Okay. I've multiplied through to get rid of the fraction. Usually I have um, the y's on the left hand side. You know when we did this just a second ago, we put it into mx plus b form. So I'll put the y on the left where I want it to be. Uh, I might as well, I'll just write that without changing it. I can expand and make y the subject here, all in one hit. Right. So what do I get when I expand the right-hand side? 2x plus 6. Both of them get multiplied by 2. And I might as well, while I'm at it, add 1 to both sides to get y on its own. Does that make sense? That's going to balance things out for me. Okay. And as a confirmation of what we got before, it's a relief. Same answer, because it's the same question. Okay. Now. This feels a bit unfamiliar because we haven't done this before, okay? But now that you've done it, we can actually use this and do, the, do things sort of straight away by looking at this line here. I want you to look carefully at that line and the original information you were supplied. 
For instance, that two. Where did that come from? Like, go back, chase back through, where did the two come from? It's the gradient. So if I change this gradient, made it say like a half, you just change this two to a half, right? Uh, what about these numbers here? Where did these come from? They came from these here, right? But just look carefully, look at those numbers again. Three, negative one. What's the difference here? They're, they're opposite in sign, aren't they? Okay. So this actually came from a negative three. And this actually came from positive one. So I can summarize this. I can say from this line, if you get given any gradient, not just two, and any point, not just this point, I can say on the left-hand side, I've got y minus the y coordinate. And on the right-hand side, I've got M. the gradient, that's m, outside of x, watch out, minus the x coordinate. That guy right there. That, put a nice big colorful box around, is point gradient four. Okay. Yep. Is it wrong if you like put white dude? Does it make a difference? Um, do you mean like here and here? Oh no, no, no. You no, mean no, here no, and here? Yeah. Yes, it does make a difference. Because here, once I get at the end y and x, these are now the bits that make the equation of my line. So when you say y2 and x2, you mean a specific point. Oh, like that point and you have coordinates. <laughs> but here I mean, remember I said, this could be any point along my line. So that's why you use x and y without any labels. Okay. So, this saves us a lot of work. We've got general form now. We've got gradient intercept form. Now I've got point gradient form, where if you've got this different set of information, you can go there straight away. And look, it takes one, two, three lines. If you're supplied with a point and a gradient, Use point gradient form now that you see it and you recognize it. You can quote this, this thing here. You don't need to prove it like we just did. You can go straight there and just carefully look at the information you've got. Substitute everything into the right places. I'm going to write the formula straight away. I'm going to write the form down. You may find it useful uh, when you write down your information. See how there's all these pieces here. Identify which one's which. Gradient here, what's that going to substitute into? Have a look at this line here. Which spot does it go into? M. It's going to be, the gradient is, is this guy here, right? So that'll be M. Negative 6 and 4 are the, the x1, y1 coordinate, right? So I'm going to go x1 there, y1 there. Once you've lined up and identified where everything goes, you just let it unfurl, right? Left hand side, y minus what? Have a look. Four. Yep, there it is. There's y1. Equals. Okay, gradient. Right there. Negative 1 outside of x. x. Now, I'm going to suggest, just like we did over here, even though you can go straight to, oh, this is a plus, this is a double negative. I encourage you to actually write the minus and the negative, okay? It'll make sure that you do it right and you don't skip a step and then you get confused and you don't know why because your working doesn't tell you. Negative 6. All right. Uh, I can add everything to both sides. Uh, sorry, add four to both sides. So this is going to be. Let's have a look here. Minus x minus six plus four. What do you think? Did I do it right? I expanded these brackets and I subtracted, added four to both sides. And now I can just tidy up. Minus six. What happens over here? Minus two. Minus two, very good. Full stop. Okay. Uh, what form is this in, by the way? This form has a name. You know what this form is. This is slope intercept form. Right? Um, have a look at the question. Do they want it in that form? Or do they want it in some other form? General. Do they want it in general form? Okay, that's easy. How do I change that to general form? It's pretty straightforward. Bring everything to the left side. Yeah, I just want zero on the right hand side, so I'm going to cut everything from the right to the left. That means I'll add x and I'll also add 2. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. It really doesn't matter, but usually it's ax plus by plus c. That's the order you'll see most frequently.